This is not what, how, what we signed up for, what those jurors signed up for. There's discussion about a corrupt and later police officer. Because this is exactly what I told you was going to be a problem. You bring this stuff up, I got a jury sitting in the box. Do you see the problem or the issue that you, that you filing this untimely motion has caused? Yes or no? <laughs> the silence. Day 57 of the Young Thug YSL RICO trial was interesting. Co-founder of YSL Walter D.K. Murphy testifies because he is obligated to do so in his plea agreement. He is then told to read from his plea agreement in front of the jury, which states YSL is a gang and Thug founded it with him. The judge also yells at the attorneys later in this video. <laughs> Every day is an absolute disaster. And this trial, hit subscribe, join the channel membership is only 10 cents per day. Here we go. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. You can't film him. The media was about to film someone they weren't supposed to film. First look at Thug. He's worn this turtleneck before. Looks like he's asleep right now. <laughs> oh, nope. He's awake. Man, say my first and last name. I mean, but that could have been anybody. Sitting. This guy's back up on the stand. What's the point in bringing this guy back, dude? Man, I don't even know Walter Murphy. Why you keep trying to make me know something? Same day you keep saying you met me at Fort Scanner, right? I told you I didn't know Walter Murphy. You saying I know Walter Murphy. But the same day you met me, it's the same dude an hour before you met me. The ball head dude back there told him I don't know Walter Murphy. When you go like this, like you did in the old bond, the whole county jail. I don't know Walter Murphy. You don't think that Walter Murphy realized you were in the car the day that the shooting happened because you and him are actually cool with one another, right? I don't even know him. Walter Murphy sounded like a white person then. You also said that you ran into Walter Murphy, made on the DK, in the Fulton County Jail after the shooting, and there was no problems between two of y'all, right? How much these folks paying you to um try to make it seem like I know these people? How much these folks paying you? I didn't been to prison. This is my second time in prison, so I ran into a lot of people. So I ain't tell you I know Walter Murphy. So my partner got out of the car. He was fixing to go in the store, but the girl was talking to him about how they felt when you were on their tail. Correct? That's what you told Detective Dennis. Incorrect. <laughs> this guy is funny as shit. They were, you know, trying to get at each other, right? Wrong. This is right. <laughs> so I guess he thought they was exchanging numbers and trying to get at his girl, right? Wrong. Why are you saying this shit? Incorrect. Nitro G, 4x4, four four, pulled up to the gas station, right? Wrong. This ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't involved in nothing. I ain't shoot nobody. I didn't rob nobody. This don't have nothing to do with me. So why would I be giving you some information about something? This ain't got nothing to do with me. Are you lying like, man, this is not, man, come on, man. So, Mr. White, do you know what eight gang sticks and 40s are? You do too? I'm asking you, Mr. White. I'm asking questions. No, I don't. Yeah, I play, I, I play, um, play with it on Call of Duty. Yeah, they're okay. just talking about <laughs> Oh my god. I, I used the AK or 40 on Call of Duty. These don't have nothing to do with me. It's not making no sense at all. You ducked when you saw that bullet come through the windshield because you were scared, right? I was at a gas station. Before the shooting, right? They weren't shooting, nobody was shooting at me. Were they shooting at someone that you knew? Why you keep trying to make me know they do? I don't know him. That's not my phone. We were never friends. That... But do you remember a time that you just left the gas station and a car you were driving in was shot? I know I know they were saying the dude got shot in the head when I ran from the gas station. Uh, no. The bird just burp straight into the microphone. I never spoke with nobody, bro. You keep trying to put me on the case. I cannot help you. You keep trying to ask me about a dude who got shot in the head. The bullet didn't hit me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. All right. After the most pointless direct examination ever by the state, this witness didn't help anything. Now Brian seals up for cross. And you said that you're not a victim because you weren't shot. You remember something like that? Yes, sir. We were aware that Jeffrey Williams was touring throughout the United States, the southern part of the United States, in April of 2015. Objection, Your Honor. Touring on the southern part of the United States. Excuse me. I'm gonna rule the objection. I, mean, I don't know what toy date, but I mean, I know he's a celebrity, so he probably was torn. The Jeffrey Williams at that time, or Young Thug at that time, was touring with another artist known as Travis Scott. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. I'm gonna overrule the objection. The judge overruled the district attorney three times in a row. Now you never told detective and, and whomever the detectives are or anybody that Jeffrey Williams was in any way involved in this April 12, 2015 incident. Is that true? I never absolutely told nothing like that. You never saw Jeffrey Williams on or around April 12, 2015. You never said that to anybody, right? I never ever said it. I seen the footage, but he was not there. Right. This had nothing to do with Jeffrey Williams, correct? Correct. And that's pretty much it for D'Angelo White. Not a very helpful witness for the jury. I don't even understand. I mean, it's just showing that DK shot this dude in the fucking head. And DK is up on the stand now, boys. Here we go. For more context, he was in prison from 2015 to 2022, got out, then got arrested again for this RICO, then got a plea deal. So he has a plea deal, but it's not public. So we don't know what he has to agree to on the stand, but he has to agree to some shit because he took a plea. Basically the same thing with Trontavia Stevens' tick from a month or two ago. In 2005, when you moved from- <clears throat> Why is all these motherfuckers burping today? And did you ever attend high school? No. Damn, bro never went to high school one day in his entire life. Think about how crazy it is. Wow. Never stepped foot in a high school. Have you gotten your GED? Yeah. When did you obtain it? In prison. What is the age range of your children? 16, 15, 8, and then I got four months old. Baby boy. And are you currently working? Yes. What type of work do you do? Uh, I'm manufacturing windows and doors. How long have you known Jeffrey Williams? Uh, I'm not good with time. Alex Since we were kids. Huh? Do you call him Jeffy Wayne when you refer to him? I don't call, call nobody by their whole name. Okay. What did you call him? 
Lil Jeff, how am I lying? You're a lot of nicknames. Okay. What's some of the other nicknames? Uh, Prune. It's a family nickname. Did he say uh, Thug's nickname in his family is Prune? Do you remember the circumstances of how you <laughs> met um, Mr. Williams? They, you asked me to think about a long, long time ago. You know how much I've been through since then? Have you been through a lot? Tremendously. Mm, one of our biggest things was listening to music. What is your current relationship with Mr. Williams? I don't have a relationship with him. When did that relationship cease? It, it never ceased. It's just, I went to prison. When you went to prison, you don't really have no relationship. All that in. I had impo more important relationships to worry about than friends, like my kids. Yeah. Does it look like you? Yeah. Is there anyone else in that picture? Yeah. Okay. And does it look like that person who was in the picture? The old picture of Thug right here on the left and DK right here on the right. And who else? Legit. All right. And looking at that picture, do you recall when that picture was taken? No. Okay. Is it before you went to prison, uh, either in 2014 or 2015? Yeah, I guess just laying foundation for the jury, like showing an old picture of them together. Were you ever associated with a group, Red Cartel? A music group, yeah. A music group. So he's going to go that route. What it is today, I know it was one. I was with him. A music group. We was rapping or trying to rap. How did you learn about Red Cartel? How did I learn about it? Yeah, how did you learn about Red Cartel? <clears throat> it was a group of guys rapping. I just, it was all cool. We just. Did you wear any specific colors? No, you can wear whatever color you want to wear. Uh, I think we did have like shirts or something. How are they allowed to put gang clothing and all this together? And Brian Steele wants to approach, and I'm sure he doesn't like that. They took out the gang clothing part. I don't remember that. The ones I'm talking about, we had our name on like, individually. I don't know. And look at it. Do you see the back of it on the right hand side? Which part is the back? So let's go to the one on the left hand side. Do you see the individual with a, with a chain around their neck? Yeah, okay. I see that. And does that appear to be the front of someone? I guess. All right. Okay, I see the, oh, Red Cartel, Creek City Records. Okay, and then underneath that, do you see what it says? I don't know what they say at the bottom, but the other part, I say gang. It says rock gang. Now you said that we all stayed off of Cleveland Avenue. Do you know any individuals who associated themselves with rock crew? When you say associate, like, what you mean by that? He's trying his hardest not to snitch about any specific names. Part of, they consider themselves rock crew, they call themselves rock crew. Do you know anyone like that? The whole, all the kids from Cleveland Avenue when I was younger. Who were some of the people that you knew who were from Cleveland Avenue that associated themselves or called themselves rock crew? I can't remember their name. We were in middle school. We kids. <laughs> some, some of the people that you may remember. I can't really remember nobody's name like that. I try to forget about Cleveland Avenue. I ain't been on Cleveland Avenue in 10 years. Was Trontavia Steve's a part of rock crew? Mm -hmm. A part of it? I, I can't really say he was a part of it. I mean, I guess you would have to be rock crew to say he's a part of it. I, would, I don't really know that. Jeffrey Williams, was he a part of rock crew? I, I don't know. Um, He's not even from Cleveland Avenue. Did he ever hang around Cleveland Avenue? We both did, yeah. So funny, that's the same thing Tick said, that Thug wasn't from Cleveland Avenue, so he can't be part of Rock Crew. A nice big yawn from Thug right there, halfway through the day, five hours in. Boo, yeah, I know, boo. Do you know him to be a part of Rock Crew? I mean, a part of it. He from Cleveland Avenue, that's what you ask. Do you know him to be the founder of Rock Crew? I don't know who the founder of Rock Crew. I don't even know when they were found. All these f just pretend like they're dumb, dude. <laughs> it's so good. Was Red Cartel ever associated with anyone? <laughs> I don't remember. We were just wearing red. You said you don't remember? I don't recall. Okay. But you were just wearing red? Yeah. Do you know why you all were just wearing red? It was just a color. <clears throat> why red versus any other color? I don't, I don't know. Did you ever I ask? Why we wear red and not purple, blue, green, orange? I, mean, I like the red. You like the red? Yeah. Yeah, nothing to do with bloods. <laughs> Did you ever associate or call yourself a, a member of any gang? The long pause means yes. Mm, I might have did. You might have did? Okay. Yeah. What gang might you have did call yourself a member of? Um... Blood. So then why the question before, why didn't you say that? It wasn't just because you liked red. Did you hang around any other individuals that called themselves bloods? I don't know. I, I know I was calling myself blood. I don't know what nobody else was doing. I'm trying to figure out who like what you're saying. I, I don't understand it. I've hung around people who call themselves Crip, Christian, Muslim, I don't know all kind of people. Or associate yourself around other individuals who call themselves bloods. In prison or jail, probably. Did you ever commit any crimes while you called yourself blood? I don't know, like what you mean? Like why I'm doing the crime, I'm blood. What, what are you saying? Sure. While you were in that 2005 era that you said you started becoming a blood, were you committing crimes? Start becoming, I call myself a blood. I ain't right, start so becoming a blood. The blood said sex money murder. Mm, yeah, I heard of it. How have you heard of sex money murder? Jail, prison, and songs. I heard about it a lot of places. Did you ever call or claim yourself to be a part of sex money murder? Mm, yeah. When did you do that? What year? I don't years? remember what year. Okay. When what? it got popular, everybody was calling themselves that. Was that around the same time that you started calling yourself a blood? Whenever blood got popular, that's when I started calling myself blood. Were you just able to wake up one morning and start calling yourself a part of sex money murder? Yeah. And did you hang around other individuals that called themselves or that were members of sex money murder? I don't know what nobody else was doing. I know what I was doing. See, he's he scared to bring up other people's names and shit, which I understand that. I wonder what his plea says he has to agree to because he's got to be really careful here. To your knowledge, did any of the individuals that we talked about, Trontavia Stevens, do you know if he associated himself with sex money murder? I don't know. Nobody else was doing. I know what I was doing. What about Jeffrey Williams? 
to your knowledge, did he claim himself to be a part of sex offender? I don't know what nobody else was doing. I know what DK was doing. Trying his hardest not to snitch. Look at this first tweet from January 29th, 2012. Is that you? Yeah. And Sex money murder. All right. And is that is that you in this picture? I don't answer that. Okay. What's what are you doing with your hands? You know what crazy? I never I don't even know what that means. So you would just take a picture and you don't know what the hands symbol means? Yeah, I don't know what that means. It looked fat though back then. They search murder on Twitter to find all these tweets. That's like sexy money murder. Okay. They're probably in a girl. So that wasn't you believe with someone else? Yeah, a couple people have my password. Couple of people have my password. That man lying on the stand. Black, black. Banging sex money murder. I don't know what that was. That just seemed, I thought it was cool. Everybody else was doing it. So you were just typing and you had no idea what black man? Mm hmm. And as a part of this plea, um, did you fill out a plea agreement in this case? Did I fill it out? Did you sign an initial on a plea agreement? I initially, yeah. What did he agree to? Did I initially, yes. Okay. And did you understand what you initialed? That's a good question. Oh, did you? I did by then though. It's, it's kind of confusing because I, I understood it, but I didn't understand like this part of it. When you say this part of it. Like mean? testifying part, I didn't understand that part. Okay. This is literally tech all over again. He's trying his hardest not to snitch, even though he had a plea agreement and there might be something in there he has to agree to. And I'm guessing it's saying that YSL was a gang in there somewhere. He has to agree to that. Some of the language that YSL members use, that's why I was trying to, people was using these words way before. Some of these words way before. YSL even was a label or we start a group or anything like that. But I heard it way before. Why is that even? He's trying to defend it right now. That's what that's the lawyer's job, not yours, brother. You agreed to it. And so I just asked you a few moments ago if you were black men. Now I remember, I, bro, I don't got a whole life. I don't, you think I'm sitting at home or at work thinking about that? I'm not thinking about that, bro. I got four kids. I'm not thinking about that. So this is a promotional tweet of a show or something saying, going down tonight at Thugger Thugger, blat blat. I did a lot of stuff without meaning or purpose. I was childish, young, dumb. Because it's not me no more. I'm grown now. I was a kid. Yeah, because I just told you. That's not me no more. Because I was just doing stuff. I just told you that. <clears throat> I was promoting music. It's going down tonight. Um... I was just doing stuff, I told you that. Why are you trying to make me got a child and stuff, man? Let me ask you, in 2011, you were 20 years old? Yeah. All right. I was still a child, though, mentally. Because okay. that's what you were getting at, right? My age. But you were 20 years old. Yeah, I was 20 years old. I was physically grown, but mentally, I was not in my right mind. Don't let these trick y'all. They not with this red cartel shit. Great. See what I'm saying? That don't even make sense. Okay. And I'm on bleeding with it. Pull up. Whatever that part of me. Guns and had it on hood. And that was a tweet that came from your account. Whether it's child or not, you tweeted that from your account. I don't remember tweeting. Okay. But it's that's my account though. All right. If I tweeted that, I definitely misspelled it. Okay. And why would why do you believe you would have definitely misspelled it if you would have tweeted it? Cause I probably would have said I'm on Cleveland every day. I wrote B Bath. Black black. I don't know. I don't even know what none of that means. All right. But that's a tweet from your Twitter account. F a M word if he ain't sex money murder. No, that's a song. But is SMM for sex money murder? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm not the only person who had the password to that account. Okay. Once again, the same reason that everybody was doing it back then. It was, it was the popular thing. That is such a stupid statement. He's trying to act dumb. He's trying not to snitch. I get it, but he just sounds dumb. Get out of here. Two guys up to speak. So the jury has already seen that video with other witnesses, but it's definitely not a good look. But does it prove they committed crimes in furtherance of YSL? It's mainly just for showing gang affiliation. I'm about DK, they got it, and he got it on. You're DK, right? Are you DK? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Are you in prison in, that, in this video? Yeah, he said you got out. Are there other bloods in this video? Yeah, I don't, it ain't me with the camera. I'm in a, some apartments in the neighborhood. I'm not with nobody. I'm by myself. I just got out of jail. And he got the screen up on him. Did you see those hand signs? <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. I seen the video. What were you doing with your hands? I don't know what I was doing. They were moving, though. I don't know. So you don't know what they were? <laughs> I don't know what they mean. I was just doing stuff. How did you learn those hand signs? You don't learn them. We know this guy's lying, right? He knows what those hand signs are, bro. And did you have a strap on you that day? I don't recall. I kept a gun, though, so I probably did have a gun. I don't know, though. This whole testimony is very similar to Tech. Just doing what he has to do to get through his plea agreement. It's pretty much what the vibe I'm getting. Mr. Murphy, you said this. What am I going to do it? Because I'm asking you to. Like, what if I don't? I'm asking you to thank you so much. Can you point yourself out in the picture? Bro did not want to stand up to point at people. And you said that Mr. Williams is in that right picture. Right beside me to the right. Okay, and where is Mr. McNutt? To the left on the guy on the far right. Can you use your stick that you don't want to use to point him out? To the left of the guy on the far right with the glasses on and the red shirt. Can you stand up, sir, please, and just point on the screen? All statements below are truthful. All right. And what does number one say? Why I say otherwise? 
No, it's on Slime Life began as a neighborhood group, but evolved into a gang. And did you initial number one? Yeah. Is that snitching? He agreed to it evolving into a gang in front of the jury. And this is a RICO trial. A lot of people would say this is snitching. Those are your initials, right? Yeah. Okay. So when I just asked you was why I sell a gang, why did you tell me you don't know? Well, I don't know when it evolved into a gang. I know when, when I when we made it, it was a, a neighborhood group. It was right. a group of guys from the neighborhood who made a, a music group. And in this acknowledgement that you initialed, you said it evolved into a gang. That's what you initialed. Yeah. Who were the individuals who founded or formed YSL? There was a couple of us. It was a handful of people though. I can't just name them off the bat. Name some of the people you can. Pretend to be dumb. Try not to snitch, but. Lil T and Lil Jeff. We made YSL music group. I mean, we were trying to rap. We were trying to make money off rapping. Why did it then evolve into a gang if you were first trying to do music? Um, I don't know. I guess it, I don't know. I don't know why it evolved into a gang. Everybody just wanted to be YSL. We ain't say we finna be the biggest gang in the world. We ain't do that. He clearly agreed to all this in the plea agreement to get out of jail, avoid jail. Do you remember back in 2016 having an interview at the Atlanta Police Department with an investigator, Gaither, um, at the Atlanta Police Department? Hmm? Hey, where you? In 2015. I don't know. I, I had an interview. I don't know like, what year with who though. Do you remember in that interview speaking to the detectives about the founding of YSL and who founded YSL? Do you recall that? No. Do you recall within that interview stating that it was you, Tick, Mondo that founded YSL? I don't recall saying that, but... Who is Mondo? A friend. Is Mondo a founder of YSL? Um, I wouldn't say. Do you recall in that same interview that I was just referencing that August 2016, excuse 2015 interview, told Gaither, investigate Gaither, investigate Dennis that as Mr. Williams got bigger, things with YSL kind of changed and more people started coming into YSL. That sound about right though. I don't remember saying that, but that sound about right. Stating that Pee Wee Roscoe was a crip who was a part of YSL. Mm -hmm. No, I don't remember saying that, but that's about right though, I do guess. You, do you know who Pee Wee Roscoe is? I know who Roscoe is. All right. Is he a crip? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And From my knowledge, I don't know if he a real crip, but he could just be saying he crip, I don't know. And was he part of YSL? Yeah, he worked for, uh, for Lil Joe. Manager or something like that, I don't know. What kind of manager? I ain't sure what kind, I just know he answered a lot of calls. Pee Wee Roscoe's the guy that shot up Lil Wayne's bus, so he just admitted that he worked for Lil Jeff. That's not a good look for the jury to hear that. Investigator Gaither again, Investigator Dennis, your attorney was present, and a prosecutor with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. Sir, he shot at him. Yes, sir. I was like Max Shard didn't like where that was going about an interview where he gave a statement or something. So they excused the jury and now the judge is speaking. Mr. Shard, I'm in possession of your motion limit, which you did r remind me of yesterday or, or initially say yesterday. But how long have you had this particular tape or knowledge of these particular instances? That's my first question to you. You got in discovery, correct? Sir, uh, the did you get them in discovery? Yes. Okay, then yeah. why are you just now, yesterday filing, I mean telling me orally and not doing what you did in your motion so I could kind of take it up? I did do it in my motion. No, 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 you filed a motion, but you could have filed this thing months ago. Out of court statements are not admissible at trial. Okay, that, that's not what I asked you, okay? They're if not... you believe, if you believe it was going to be an issue, you could have filed the same motion three, four, five months ago, correct? It's not. It... Yes or no? If you want to say yes, yes or no. Okay, that's my point. That's my point about being a forewarned judge is a happy judge, okay? Because we are now taking time out, and, and I'm putting the jury in the back on something that you told me yesterday about, but you could have memorialized this in a motion more than three months ago, probably last year. And I could have taken it up and we could have, I could have ruled on this. I don't have any problem with that. This is a, this is an example of something. If you want to do something like this, go ahead and file the motion. You should have filed it months ago. That's what I'm annoyed with. Okay, in your honor, the state- And that's asked... what it means to be prepared as an advocate. Okay. The state's giving you this, okay? You knew about these- honor, you, the state- You knew about this issue, right? Perhaps the state, knowing that it's an issue, would not want to admit evidence of an individual being a prosecutor- I get it. a defense I, attorney I, on the same I time. get it, but so you perhaps know, it's not on me. The prosecutor that put DK in jail is now a defense lawyer for someone else on this trial. It was YSL Polo who isn't on the trial anymore. Look, he's not in the courtroom. I don't think the attorneys like this, that this statement's being brought in that it's a defense lawyer who was a prosecutor almost nine years ago that put DK in jail nine years ago. So this is like really confusing. Using. The state should not be. Oh, it's, to it's on. It's on you, okay, and it's, it's on, on them. Me. It's, it's on. Me. It's on. It's on. It's on me. You know why? It's on you because you could have filed this thing months and months ago, and you could also have a conversation with the state. I have. Okay, and are they going to use this particular information? I, you'd have to ask them. Well, that's not what I asked you. Are you going? Are they going the state, to use that particular information? I cannot speak for the state, Your Honor. Okay. Do you see the problem or the issue that you that you filing this untimely motion has caused? Yes or no? <laughs> 
the silence. Uh, you're not going to like my answer, so I'm just going to remain silent. That's not being an advocate, because if you can give me a reason as to why you waited months and months. I, I kind of feel like it's the state's fault, too, because they they clearly know the defense lawyers aren't going to like this. And I'm glad Max Shart here is standing up for himself. Arguably, Mr. Shart, this could have been filed sometime in 2022 or early 2023 when we started having these particular motions. Your colleagues, you filed several motions, several preliminary issues I've had to take up. So that's what I'm telling you I, in terms of just having to stall the proceedings so I can go ahead and take this up. I'm not trying to stall anything. Right? No, 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 no. And, and I don't mean, and I don't mean you, I, I, listen, listen, I don't mean you like, like just filing this to stall it, okay? okay? All right, but I'm just annoyed that you didn't file it in 2023. The state has been fully aware that their colleague who was a gang prosecutor was serving as a defense attorney on this case. And okay, but that's a- understand why it's- my job to flag that issue, but I have flagged the issue. Okay. And so if I'm going to take now, it, now you flag the issue now in 20 in, on the ninth, the 10th of April of 2024. Have a seat, sir. Okay, thank you. Max Shard is pissed. Did kind of wait a little long to flag this issue. But at the same time, I feel like it's also the state's fault a little bit to even try to do this. But are you going to really use this motion? I mean, use the proffer agreement uh, or proffer that Mr. That was held? Yes, and Mr. Murphy continues to go down this line of questioning. And I, I'm going to tell you, that's a very ethical, problematic thing for you all. Your Honor, and this is what I'll say. Mr. Suri Chata Jimenez waived his conflict and decided to take a defense attorney in this case when he knew he was a prosecutor in 20 No, but it's you all's use of that. I think that waiving the waiving his waiving is another separate issue, okay, which we didn't have to get into because of that particular issue. But utilizing his particular proffer um, that he was involved in might be a problem. But it's a proper of the state of a it's a prior inconsistent statement. But he's but he's a but he's a counsel that was involved in this case. Right, but you're on there's no legal basis, there's no ethical basis for it. She's acting oblivious like that can't raise issues. Whoever the state's representative is doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is it's a prior inconsistent statement. Well, I think it may, it may confuse the jury because the jury's seen Mr. Jimenez, Jimenez as a defense counsel for another prior accused who is now no longer in this case. So yes. There is, the, there is the possibility and the probability that they are going to be confused about that. So can we not just instruct the jury that he was a previously with the state of Georgia and left and got a new job? Like what? You'd agree that his, that Mr. Chad Jimenez is, um, if, if the tape or anything would be utilized, it would have to be redacted. I, I don't agree with that, Your Honor, because he does case. not, and, and a few things about the profit, Your Honor. But you see, here's the problem, and here's why I'm gonna get on you all about. It. You all knew this was gonna be an issue. We did not. And you, 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 like, you, you, discuss, you put this in discovery. But we you put one of your former colleagues who took a proffer, who then, who then, you, you made it as part of your discovery. So how could you know it wasn't an issue? Because, Your Honor, we put the proffer because that's the prior consistent statement. It had nothing to do with Mr. I know, but, the, but, we did but not they, I'm glad the judge got his head out of his ass a little bit here, and he's also blaming the state. Maybe something that the court wanted to take up. Your Honor, but we, the state did not believe that to be an issue until Mr. Shaw brought it to our attention yesterday. The state did not believe, believe it to be an issue because- All right, I guess, process, I guess you all will be working this weekend then, because this is exactly what I told you was gonna be a problem. You bring this stuff up, I got a jury sitting in the box, and you got a witness that you're probably going to have days of examination with. So let me go ahead and decide. I'm going to recess for about 10 minutes. We'll make a decision on that. Okay. Because, and you, Mr. Sharp, no law in your motion or motion limiting for me to consider. You probably need to supplement it with some law. So I'll let you all think about that. I'll be back in 10 minutes. We're recess. Judge popping off. Where's the sort of the first, the initial portion of the proper agreement? It sounds like they figured it out while they were on break and they're just redacting certain things. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, possibly 14 uh, statements. But, Your Honor, some of these things are, there's discussion about a corrupt Atlanta police officer. I, would, I wouldn't know why the state would ever want to admit that, but I would just put that in as a, an abundance of caution. There's discussion about a separate bird that's not charged, that has nothing to do with this case. I know, I know it was by itself that committed this crime, that based on nothing other than her just saying, she knows. Why would they add all this random out-of-court statements like that? It's only to play these statements if we have to impeach Mr. Murphy. So what we're doing is asking him questions. If he answers them the way that he's answered them previously, we won't have to impeach him. It's going to take the better part of the day for me to go ahead and do that short of agreement. My suggestion to you is I discharge the jury for tomorrow, not have them come in, and we'll take this up on Friday, though you come in on Saturday. I, I told you this was going to happen, um, and I didn't want, I don't want to have to do it, but this is not what, how, what we signed up for, what those jurors signed up for. I don't, I'm not saying, Mr. Sharp, the motion isn't of merit. I'm in no way saying that. It's the timing, and it's, and it's just, we just cannot keep doing this. So it's going to take me the better part of a day to go ahead and do this. You got 13 statements. I got a rule upon it. Unless you all tonight work out all of the, work out something in terms of the admissibility of those statements. If you do that, then I won't have to take them up. I'm going to excuse the jury and go ahead and do that. So y'all want to have a couple minutes to chat? That's pretty much it. This is all argument over statements from 10 years ago of Walter Murphy. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Did Walter Murphy snitch? Comment down below your opinion. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. Join the channel membership. It's only 10 cents per day. Love you guys. Peace out.